Okay, so what is this African American Brain Health Initiative? Well, it comes out of the issue that African Americans have twice the risk of Alzheimer's and age-related memory loss. And that really was what spurred us to ask, what could we at the university do to help our community here address that issue? And the reasons for this increased risk um, are probably not biological. They're environmental, lifestyle, and behavioral factors. So the good news is this risk can be brought down. And part of our mission has been to establish a community brain health advisory board. You met with some of the people. Diane introduced them to work with some of the community organizations, many of you here, and together to, to work within the community and the university to promote brain health, promote cognitive vitality, and to have a better understanding of brain and mental health disorders. And so that's why we're all here today, and that's why we're all working together. These are a few of our community partners. Um, I'm hoping all of you are represented here. This just shows the spread and, and the, the inclusiveness of uh, the, the very different organizations that surround Rutgers Newark that have been involved in this initiative. Okay. We've had now, this is our eighth year. We've been doing this for eight years. And over the last eight years, we've had aging and brain health programs for seniors. We've had lunch and learns at churches, dementia caregiver support days, very important because so many people here in the community are taking care of a loved one with Alzheimer's or dementia. Um, and thanks to Margaret Camareri and the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, we've been able to run these fabulous brain and heart healthy soul food cooking classes. So these are just some of the kinds of programs we've been doing over the last eight years. Um, you have all of you a, uh, in your uh, little handout, you've got a brochure, um, the Rutgers Newark African American Alzheimer's Awareness Program. Um, you can turn to that later, it tells you what is Alzheimer's disease, why are African Americans more at risk, when does it begin, how does it develop, and how is it diagnosed and treated. It's an overall resource guide to understand Alzheimer's. What's the future? We've gone, had eight years, and our goal is not just to continue in the same, but to grow. Um, and one of the things that we are very committed to doing is integrating this community engagement with the other missions of the university. So the university has a mission towards research, fundamental research, to advance our understanding of the world, including ourselves and our brains and our health. And Rutgers is uh, at the forefront of that. We want to integrate the African American Brain Health Initiative with research um, and with education. We have graduate students. We have undergraduates. You're going to meet one of our young stars here. And our goal is to get the students, both the undergraduates and the graduate students, involved in this. And this way, the program becomes more than just the community engagement, but it's something that links together the research, the education, the community engagement. Uh, their other goal is to bring in sustainable funding. We've been sort of hand to mouth with, with various corporate and other private donors to keep these programs going. Our goal now is to expand, by expanding to including research, we can target the National Institutes of Health and try to bring in substantial long-term sustainable funding. And my, my good friend Francis Dixon told me the other day, he says, we don't do any one shots. He says, he says, I'm not interested in anybody who's going to come here, do something, and then disappear. As he knows, we've been working with Francis and the rest of you for eight years, and our goal is to continue working. And part of that goal is to bring in some sustainable funding. And, and ultimately, what we hope is not only are we able to be impact the local community, but we're going to be able to make Rutgers Newark a nationally recognized center for innovative approaches to African American brain health issues. So this is really our, our launch this year to announce a, a new research program at Rutgers University Newark in Pathways to Healthy Aging in African Americans. And this research program is going to have two parts. The first is observational studies. We want to understand at each point in the age range, from young to old to older old, how do the various factors influence from biology, from who your par parents, from uh, behavior, from lifestyles, from diet to sleep. How do all these factors at each point in the life lifespan affect different aspects of learning and memory? Um, the second part of this program is interventional studies. And we have here Dr. Brandon Alderman, who uh, will come up a little bit later and talk. He's a world expert on exercise and, and exercise physiology and how that helps the brain and mood. And uh, with his collaboration with his students from Rutgers New Brunswick, we're planning, we're beginning some exercise and yoga classes. So it's not just enough to ask, what are the factors which make some people more likely to maintain brain health and the others not? But how can we take those people who we've identified as being at most at risk and what can we do to help them? How can we intervene, particularly with programs based on exercise and yoga and lifestyle changes? So that's really the launch this year after eight years of community outreach and education to begin to expand to include research. We have a brochure that's in your flyer that we, that we communicate. It's, it's about African Americans and the benefits of participating in research. 
and Elian, a student in my lab, will talk a bit more about this later. But this brochure and Elian later will talk about what are the benefits of research participation, why have African Americans been underrepresented, and what are the measures that are in place to ensure that everyone who participates is safe. This is another brochure that you'll find in your flyer. It's one that we're going to be distributing through all the churches and senior centers. It's our recruitment flyer. It tells you about the study. Why are we doing this study, brain health? What were you asked to do if you participate? How long does it take? And what are the benefits for any individual who participates? And this flyer has this information, and we'll talk more about it. We'd hope that all of you, I think we have how many people here today? 170? So we'd love to get all 170 of you enrolled in this study to participate. And this will help make us uh, a real research powerhouse to be able to not only to ask questions that are relevant to this community, but nationally as well. Um, there's a card. For those of you who would like to participate, there's a card in your, in your uh, uh, folder. Um, you can return this card, fill it out, and give it to any of the staff, any of Diane's staff or, or my staff here at this table or at the door or at the table. Fill that out and give it to them, and someone will contact you, or you can call or email. But one way or the other, we want to get everyone here and everyone in the community involved in this important research study. And we have a website many of you have been to. This tells you more about the programs and the research, and also has lots of advice on memory and brain health for you to go to. So that's a bit of an overview of, of where we've been for the last eight years, where we hope to go in the next decade.